screeched and we were defenseless. The houses were swept up river and splinters to the Morton farm. I saw our garage lifted up and dropped into the bay. I had to hold on with both hands against the force of them. Looks like it could be another Cape Verde. Wednesday, September 21st, 1938. For the past week, meteorologists Grady Norton and Gordon Dunn have been monitoring a storm born near the Cape Verde Islands off the coast of Africa. Any other characteristics? From their offices in Jacksonville, they've tracked the hurricane as it narrowly missed the Florida coast and then veered north. The Weather Bureau really believed that the hurricane of 1938 would do what all the others had done, that it would turn and go out to sea and be forgotten. Once it's north of Florida, the hurricane is out of Norton and Dunn's hands. It now falls under the jurisdiction of the Weather Bureau's Washington, D.C. office. How you doing there, Bill? Hey, Charlie. You get the pressure readings? Yeah. One bright up-and-comer at the D.C. office is 28-year-old junior forecaster Charles Pierce. Pierce is part of a new generation of meteorologists. In 1938, the Weather Bureau had a tradition of uh, forecasting by experience. And about that period of time, there was a new school of forecasting that would look at frontal analysis uh, and air masses. And that was something different than what had been the tradition of the Weather Bureau up till that time. This new school was more systematic than their seasoned counterparts using physics and mathematical formulas to predict weather patterns. Pierce has the benefit of these new scientific theories, but he has only seen a few hurricanes. It's that meant that he was going to pay more attention to the actual data at hand and be less biased by the fact that storms in that area turned a certain way and wound up in a certain location. On the morning of September 21st, people up and down the northeast coast enjoy one of the last days of summer. West Hampton Beach, Long Island. When are the kids coming over? The Green family has spent the summer relaxing in their beachfront home. Todd Green's husband is at work in New York City. Here. Hi there. Well, how are you, Margaret and Otis and Patricia? Hi. Come on in. It had been raining off and on for days. To keep her son and daughter occupied, Todd organizes an end of summer gathering. Mrs. Green uh, said that the kids were bored because it had been raining an awful lot. Uh, so she just uh, makeshifted this, this party to keep them occupied because they, they couldn't go out. Across Long Island Sound in Fenwick, Connecticut, Catherine Hepburn decides to get in nine holes of golf on the local course. And by the time she tees off on the final hole, she's having the game of her life. She, you know, whacked the ball, and they couldn't find it, where it had gone. And anyway, they went looking, and there in the hole, Catherine Hepburn had hit a hole-in-one that day. It was her first. She finishes with a score of 31, a personal best. On the island of Jamestown in Rhode Island, bus driver Norm Caswell has his normal load of nine kids in the back of his school bus. You all sit down and behave yourself. As usual, Clayton Chellis is acting up, while the rest of the children are well behaved. Twelve p.m. at the Moore House in Watch Hill, Rhode Island. The family sits down to lunch. Outside, the wind is whipping whitecaps across Little Narragansett Bay. Twelve-year-old Jeffrey Moore, Jr. notices something strange. 
the sky was orange. I had never seen a sky like that before. And there were black wisps of cloud scooting through this. Thought maybe it was the devil. Okay. Yeah, just a little warm. Just warmer. His father, Jeff Moore Sr., doesn't even notice the ominous weather. The 40-year-old has had shooting pain in his chest all day. Jeffrey? As the family finishes up lunch, Jeff suddenly slumps over. Jeffrey! 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 Catherine immediately calls the doctor. The children are terrified. To see that uh, big man ready to die scared the hell out of me. Moore is having a heart attack. At the Washington, D.C. Weather Bureau, Charles Pierce has been spending the morning meticulously poring over barometric maps and temperature data. He's tracking the hurricane that had skirted Florida the day before. The most recent reports place it nearly 150 miles out to sea and have downgraded the storm to a tropical disturbance. But a few things strike Pierce as odd. First is a radio report from a luxury liner. The captain had heeded weather service warnings and hugged the Virginia coast to avoid the storm. Nevertheless, high seas and heavy winds buffet his ship. When this ship report came in, this should have been a key which told the Washington forecasters that the storm is much farther to the west. A barometer reading near 30 denotes a clear day. Anything under 29 is an indication of a powerful storm. Just had a report from a ship called the Corinthia. The ship reports a barometric reading of 27.85 inches, a near record low for the North Atlantic. Another troubling sign. Pierce notices that a typically stable mass of high pressure off Bermuda in the Western Atlantic is in an unusual position was farther north than normal and a little bit farther to the west, which meant that the storm was allowed to turn north but could never make that northeastern turn back out into the ocean. Finally, Pierce notes that another high-pressure zone is hovering over the Allegheny Mountains. Pierce believes this confluence of factors is a recipe for disaster. The two high-pressure zones are blocking the storm on both sides forcing it to head closer and closer to land. Where are you going? I've got to go and see Mitchell. What for? In spring right now. Really? I think we've got a hurricane on our hands. He wants to tell his superiors they're wrong about the storm's path. At noon, he informs senior forecasters that it's barreling towards the northeast coast. Uh, there's something about these new forecasts. Basically, they told him, we are the meteorologists. We have the final say. And when we want your opinion, we'll ask you. Thank you very much. And proceeded to ignore his comments. Sir, if the winds are actually Do you realize here, how many years of experience of you are standing between here? The veteran forecasters have seen dozens of these storms and know their patterns. They were following conventional wisdom that hurricanes, as they, tra as they uh, travel north, get pushed out to sea by the prevailing westerly winds. They think of him as the young upstart, and they see his prediction as bold and foolish. Please leave. Uh, would you at Please least look at the maps? Sir? Leave. Tell me you'll at least... In the 2 p.m. advisory out of the D.C. office, there is no mention of the word hurricane. Within the next few hours, forecasters will learn just how wrong they are.
Back in Watch Hill, Rhode Island, as ocean waters begin to stir outside, Jeff Moore is in bed. He's had a mild heart attack and is following the doctor's orders of rest with no excitement or exertion. Within the hour, the Moore family and millions of people up and down the northeast coast will have nowhere to run. Violent Earth, New 